You know, it's been an amazing six months since Romulus and Remus were first born. We've had a great opportunity to get to observe them grow and develop and hit all of their milestones. Now we're coming up to the point in their life where they're about to go to their first doctor's appointment, their first annual exam. When they do that, we're going to have this amazing opportunity to take blood, to um, use CT imaging, to get really advanced ideas of what's happening to, you know, within their skeleton and their musculature. So today, Romulus and Remus, at a little more than six months old, weigh um, a, a little more than 90 pounds, which is about 20% larger than a standard gray wolf. So we can really tell that the dire wolf uh, uh, genes are kicking in and we're getting these nice large wolves that are much more representative of what we saw in the, uh, in the ancient specimens. Khaleesi, is a little smaller, a little younger. She's a female, so she's a little more petite. Today she weighs about 35 pounds, but she's still tracking about 10, 15% larger than what we've seen in gray wolves. My name is Paige McNichol. I am manager of animal husbandry at Colossal, and I am the manager of the team that takes care of the daily care of the dire wolf. As of right now, the roles in the pack are in flux because they're growing up and they're still youngsters. But right now, Remus is really taking that alpha role and Romulus is stepping down and being more subordinate, so he's kind of the beta, and their personalities really play to those factors. Remus really likes to watch things, and he figures stuff out. He's also a little bit smaller, so sometimes that's interesting to think that the smaller of the two would be the more dominant, but he's crafty and he's always watching. Romulus, he likes to go out first, which is very much of a beta trait, to be the one in front while the leader's leading from the back. We can see that when they eat, we can see that when they play, when they explore new things and it may not stay that way as they continue to grow up. That may change, it could change when we add Khaleesi into the mix. As they're still young, that pack dynamic isn't set, it's still very fluid. Romulus and Remus are eating pretty much their adult diet, even though they are not adults. Their diet is that, that would be very similar to what we'll give them as an adult. And they are eating high quality, dog kibble and ground meat, which is human grade. Sometimes we'll switch it out with some chunk meat, which is a soft tissue meat. They also get some organ meats. They'll get access to bones. They really like rib bones and knuckle bones. As they continue to get older, we will start adding in some whole prey items, which are bigger chunks to give them access to meat and help them develop those abilities and instincts where they would be eating on a group just like they would in the wild, so eating some type of carcass. Romulus and Remus are together pretty much all the time. Khaleesi's gonna join the pack as soon as she's big enough to do so safely, so we have to kind of let her grow up and catch up with the older brothers, Romulus and Remus, and we wanna make sure that we have done all of our steps so it is very safe and a positive experience for all three of them. So it's really taking our cues off of her size and then as they go through what we call the howdy process, where they can see each other, smell each other, but not interact, and we see complete positive behaviors from that, and that it seems that they're going to get along, then we'll go ahead and move to the next step. So before we make the introduction of bringing Khaleesi into the group with the boys, we're gonna be looking for really um, strong indicators that they are, um, socially compatible. We're really excited about that. We'll have a lot of opportunity and sort of a stage-gated process where Khaleesi gets closer and closer to the boys until one day we're able to open the doors and put them all out on the preserve together. 